This live website was made entirely with AI and has just replaced my entire design workflow. The brief, the copy, the structure, absolutely everything about this website was done with AI. I did not touch it and we're gonna be recreating it inside of this video. First, we're gonna take a look at how we can prompt ChatGPT to create a very good brief for us. Not a standard one, but a very good one. Then we're gonna take a look at that brief and actually use our AI to generate the website. Then we're gonna take a look at how we can add in images, animations, and finally publish it without doing anything ourselves, only AI. So let's dive into ChatGPT. I gave it this prompt, which you'll find in the Notion downloadable in the description. So you're a creative director, I'm a freelance web designer building a personal portfolio inside of Framer. Can you write a homepage brief for me? I need the following. One, super strong headline, two, supporting subheadline. That is gonna be the core of our website. If we don't have those two, then you're done. You're absolutely screwed. Number three, three to four key service sections with short descriptions, four, simple call to action, a brief about me paragraph, footer style block, and then we're gonna also give it the tone that we want. So from that, it's gonna generate this amazing brief for us. Number one, headline, number two, sub headline, and all of that we can. So I'm just gonna take that and paste it directly inside our AI generator. So we're gonna click go, and instead of using one of the pre-built sections, it's gonna actually create a website for us that actually includes a logo, which is great. And since it knows my name, it's gonna be able to create a brand new website for us. Now, the cool thing about this, number one, is that it's responsive from desktop to mobile. So if we go ahead and preview mobile here and just extend all the way to desktop, we'll see that it actually works. But there's a couple things that we can obviously improve. For one, the layout is a little bit boring. It has everything that we need to launch. If we wanted to, we could just add in a couple of, of images generated by AI as well, if we wanted to, maybe not. And we can just get going, right? but we can do better. So let's go ahead and improve this. So I'm gonna go back into Wireframer here and I'm gonna say for the web design for startups section, make sure it has a parallax scroll with examples of websites that we can build. Let's try to see what Framer can create for us for this section. So we can see that it can actually add any parallax scroll or any of that kind of advanced animation that we want to add. If you are accustomed to something like awards or side of the day, then that's kind of the vibe that I was going for by asking it. So it's interesting that we are now at a point where AI cannot do what we want it to for now. So where does that leave us with our portfolio? Well, for one, we could obviously go ahead and do it ourselves manually, or we can use something like Tilebit, which I obviously created for this purpose. And we can go here into, let's see, one of the many big award style sections, make sure we're in the right layer, copy that, and then paste it into the correct folder. Let's see here. And now when we preview this, we'll see that we have more of that sort of award style, super unique type of layout. Now, if we wanted to, let's go ahead and go back into this first section here and say, okay, let's make it more unique though. Change the layout to be different from the other two. Let's see what that does, because I think if we can use AI as much as possible, then we don't need other tools like Tilebit, even though I did build it. But this kind of allows us to just use the platform natively. And I think this is a better design. So let's see what else we can do. We can make our copy hero a little bit punchier. And I do agree, it could have been improved a little bit more. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and ask ChatGPT to do the following. I think that the site can be improved with number one, an animation of some sort, a very small micro interaction, and number two, images, of course. The copy itself is pretty good. I mean, if we have this and we wanna go ahead and build out the work, the about, the contact pages, then we can do that. We can also just link them directly as anchor sections. We can change the colors. In this case, let's actually go ahead and do that. So for this black, I don't know, we can go like pink, why not? And keep that a little bit grayer. Okay, and I'm just gonna leave that as that. So we have like an accent red, or let's go orange as that's kind of the vibe of the channel. Okay, so I quite like that. But I think in the background here, we could actually use a pretty decent hero header. So let's go ahead and take a look at the other ones that we've got going on here. I'm gonna preview this for now so we can just see if there's any parallax that we like. Let's see. Okay, I think we can actually grab this main hero header and we can replace the very, very top one because although it looks good, I'm not gonna say it doesn't, we can go a little bit further with pre-built sections. So let's go ahead and just use that. So fast, sharp, ready. 
something like that. Okay, and then we can just, instead of having to redo all of this, just paste it directly here and make sure it's in the right section. So we can just go ahead and get rid of these two buttons, that one and that one, get rid of that. So now we've got the buttons are horizontal where we want them. And I think I'm just gonna go vertical. And then for the button themselves, we can make it fill as well. That's just how, in my opinion, the buttons look their best when they're in mobile. So something like that works for me. We can also make it a little bit bigger if we wanted to, but yeah, I think this is fine. In terms of this text here, we can say, okay, we can actually just take a screenshot using command shift two, paste it here and say, I have this copy here, create something that intrigues my future Whoopa. and see what ChatGPT does. All right, so I'm just gonna use that first one so we can see what it does. For some reason, ChatGPT is obsessed with the M dash, so we'll just get rid of that, add a comma, not the same, but good enough. And then we can move this to the back. Let's see here, go into layers, image two, absolute. All right, we can just move it down a little bit. And here we can see that it's also ready to go. We can maybe move this out of the way here, something like that. And then actually for our hero header, we can, and I'm just gonna get rid of this 20 pixels on the left and right because it is kind of breaking our design here. Okay, so I'm just do, gonna do a couple last minute tweaks on our images here. I'm just gonna move them out of our way so we can move the text on vertical. Let's go ahead and preview that. So that looks pretty darn good. I'm gonna go ahead and publish that. And we can say, okay, for our MVP to launch a site, the fact that we've created this in a little under probably like eight minutes, I think is pretty incredible. We have these sections here. So let's go ahead and place that into ChatGPT and say, okay, I have these images. What can I use for the bottom three sections? For the top three here, I'm gonna go into my actual agency's website and I'm just gonna grab some of our work here because why not you know we have that work so i'm just going to copy this paste it there all right and we probably benefit from something that's a little bit brighter or actually a little bit more contrast not brighter so i'm just going to grab this as well paste it there make sure that we're actually on the image i keep making that same mistake it happens to the best of us but make sure we're on the image and then this top one should be a really good one so let's go ahead and add tile bit itself why not okay we can go ahead and copy this paste it there on the actual image. All right. And then I'm just going to move this slightly. Okay. Publish again, update. And now let's see how we're looking. I'm gonna reload this. Okay, this one here is lacking a little bit of contrast. But other than that, I mean, it's looking pretty good. Let's see what ChatGPT said about this. Okay, so I think one way that we can actually use this to stand out a little bit more is gonna be we can add a slight accent here. So what we can do is gonna be, let's add 80 padding to left and right. It's gonna reduce this slightly, but I think that's fine if we just make it fill instead. And then the background itself, let's make this background part of our system that we've got going on here. So we can use that red and let's go a little bit darker or actually gonna go back to that and then just reduce the opacity. That's a little trick we guys can use. So now we've got a, a section that's slightly different. And then for this one, we can just reduce that or even make it much smaller. Okay, something like that is fine. But either way, we have a section here that's pretty well done. It's for some reason, these paddings aren't looking the best. So I'm just gonna add it really quick. That's that. And I think honestly, this is really all you really need. It's a way to communicate who you are. This is missing maybe a picture of me, picture of my personality that, that kind of pulls who I am into the project a little bit more. But again, as an MVP, this is much better, in my opinion, than going out, buying a template and not really knowing how to change anything. If you use Wireframe to get started and Tilebit or any other platform to create more advanced sections, that's completely fine. All right, so let's talk about the pros and cons of what we just did here. Now, it's faster than doing it yourself from start to publish. It's a very good way of doing an MVP. It's super fast to get feedback from clients and just get things going, get things moving. But can this replace me right now with all the workflow, all the actual product thinking that you need to do to actually get a really good website? Probably not right now. But here's the thing, this site doesn't really have a lot of soul. When we take a look at the best performing sites, they tell a story and have that soul that comes along with that story. For now, what we're doing with Wireframer works to get things off the ground 
but it's not necessarily going to help convey that emotion that you need to actually sell a product or tell a story. In this case, we just spent eight minutes on it, but can you take this to the next level? Probably, but it's going to take you a lot more time than just launching a wireframe like we just did right now. That extra step of personality is what, in my opinion, people are going to be doing when it comes to design. But let's leave that for now. I'll talk about that in a later video, but in any case, this is still just a tool. It's not a replacement for people, in my opinion, just yet. So if you're interested in that topic, stay tuned for the next video where we'll talk about if design is even useful anymore and if AI is going to replace you as a designer in 2025. So stay tuned for that.